Cannon Beach on the Oregon coast. The kind of town you see on a postcard. Yes, Cannon Beach relies heavily on tourism, but does this cheapen the town with lousy souvenirs, overcrowded streets, and overrated attractions? Or is there something more to this coastal town? Does this unique charm, posh but not persnickety, busy but mellow atmosphere transcend the typical coastal carnival town? This is Unboxing Cannon Beach. When Captain William Clark and members from the Lewis and Clark Expedition visited the area south of Tillamook Head in 1806, they found a whale that washed ashore. He named the local creek Acola, the Native American term for whale. Early settlers referred to the area as Elk Creek. In 1846, a cannon from the shipwrecked USS Shark washed ashore near present-day Arch Cape. and many began to refer to this area as Cannon Beach. In 1922, the name Cannon Beach was officially adopted as the city's name. The original cannon sat for years outside one of the area's first lodging establishments near present-day Arch Cape, and is now on display at Cannon Beach History Center. Two more cannons believed to have been from the shipwreck were discovered on the beach at Arch Cape in 2008. These cannons are currently at Texas A&M University and may take years to complete and confirm the origin of the artifacts. Normally, I'm a skip the manual type of person, but in this case, I wanted to get the full scoop on what I should be doing and where I should be going in this town. I sat down with Ken Potter at the Chamber of Commerce to find exactly that. So if it was someone's first time in Cannon Beach, how would you describe it to them? Yeah, we work hard to maintain a a kind of a village atmosphere uh, and we generally try to uh, avoid the typical tilt-a-whirl cotton candy kind of <laughs> yeah. beach town. We have a, a non-chain kind of local, uh, business. local business uh, atmosphere. I would say the number one thing is to visit Haystack Rocks <laughs> up close and personal, standing right, right on the beach, right at Haystack Rock. Okay. Um, and it's important for people to understand that it's intertidal. It's not. Yeah. It's not offshore. Uh, you can walk right up to it, and uh, it's. We just think it's a wonderful thing. It's a bird sanctuary. Yeah, the surrounding area is a marine garden. There are tide pools at low tide. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a, just quite an experience. All right. Yeah, I've actually been coming here for since I was a kid. I I have never been to Haystack Rock yet, so I oh, think you got to do that today. I think today's the day. <laughs> Excellent. All right, we are out here at Haystack Rock. This is uh, the first time ever since I have lived here my whole life that I've been out here. We are just going to explore the tide pools and see what we can find out here. Alright, let's go.
is the best place to get a bowl of chowder on a rainy day like this? Ah, that's a, that's a common question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, virtually every place in town serves wonderful chowder. Okay. Uh, there is a chowder house uh, called Moses, Moses, and that is yeah. kind of the beach experience. Okay. Uh, you can get wonderful chowder at E. Cola Seafoods. Right across the street here. Right across the street. Okay. Uh, Bill's Tavern is famous for that. Uh, Public Coast, uh, the Pelican Pub. Ecola Seafood Restaurant, established in 1993, operates two fishing vessels along the Washington and Oregon coast. Their wild caught seafood and casual atmosphere make for an excellent coastal meal experience. What does one order on a rainy day in Cannon Beach? Nicola's homemade clam chowder, of course. It tastes as good as it looks. No grains of sand hidden in the clams, creamy and warming to the soul. The perfect way to conquer the wet elements on a fall morning. You might be wondering, what can one actually do in this town? Where can I spend some quality time aside from aimlessly browsing the local shops? A personal favorite of mine, the Wine Shack. Sure, you've had French, Italian, and even Spanish wine, but if you haven't tried Oregon's regional selections, why are you even here? Sit down in the tasting room open all week for good conversation and alluring flavors. You will easily get lost in this cozy wine community. Steven Sinclair, the owner, was more than happy to share a glass of the Puff and Rosé while we dove in on why Cannon Beach is a special town. No, so, first of all, I'm, I'm glad that you first came in and bought a bottle of wine, and I'm even yeah. you know, happier that you enjoyed the bottle of yeah. wine when you came back. That's always a plus. Um, have you done wine tasting with us? I have, past? yes. Actually. Did you enjoy it? Oh, upstairs, <laughs> so it was a while ago, right? Yeah, it was a while ago. Yeah, because I'm guessing, like, Three and a half years ago, we moved it over there. Over there. Yeah, okay. So yeah, and that's a lot of fun, and it's a little more visibility, so we get more people yeah. down here now because they see it. Versus, kind of, it was a secret. It was like a secret place, <laughs> yeah, until, I remember. which was a lot of fun. It was still a good oh. time, but people just didn't see it, and so you had to know about it, right? But yeah. Um, so we've moved to town here, and now we're pouring puff and wines, and now. Um, we import every day, whereas before it was Saturdays only, and oh, now, yes. it's, now it's daily wine tasting. And people love that, right? I mean, that's a fun thing to do on a Saturday when it's rainy, is just come on and have a glass of wine. But yesterday was Friday and it was rainy, come on and have, yeah. a, have a glass of wine, right? So um, the tasting room has really just been a, uh, really well received, and the, the puffin wines are delicious. So. Yeah, so the Wine Shack has been here since 1977. It's one of the oldest wine shops in Oregon. Definitely the oldest wine shop anywhere on the Oregon coast. And it started out as, you know, in the 70s there wasn't much Oregon wine industry and Washington wine industry. So there was a lot of French and Italian and Californian wines. And since then, it's just transitioned from all you know, European and California wines to right now almost exclusively Pacific Northwest wines. So we focus on Oregon and Washington. Best wines in the Pacific Northwest, and it's because we're a we're a uh, travel town, right? We're a tourist yes. town, and so we get people from Boise and uh, Atlanta and Chicago and Dallas and San Francisco, and they don't know Pacific Northwest wines, right? And maybe they read about them here and there, or their friends have told them about them, but when they come here, they want to drink something local. You know, that big farm to table thing is so prevalent right now. Yeah. Eat local, right? Yeah. And so we're promoting that that same concept with wine. Drink local. Don't drink French wine here in Oregon. <laughs> this is a wine industry, right? Or a wine yeah. region. Drink local wines. And uh, people really have grabbed onto that. Yeah. Um, so it's been a lot of fun. It's a lot, been a lot of fun changing the dynamics of the store. But we've had some old timers that are like, where's your French section? Where's your <laughs> Italian section? I'm like, it's gone. You know, go see Laurel. She's got French and Italian wines, you know, and and um, that's fun. But it's we're really showcasing the best Pacific Northwest okay. wine. Yeah. yeah, I guess uh, when I think of Cannon Beach, I think of like a nice cozy red or something. I'm not sure if there's one that represents Cannon Beach more or just more like that. The 
Pinot Noir is probably the wine that showcases Oregon best. Yeah. It's our signature grape in Cannon Beach, right? So the Puffin Pinot Noir is kind of like our flagship gotcha. wine. Um, but we have Pinot Gris, Sauvignon Blanc, Rosé, the Pinot Noir, Cab, uh, Merlot, Petite Syrah, Red Blend, and Chardonnay. We've got a full lineup of, yeah. of Puffin Wines. What, what made you choose Cannon Beach? Well, we just when we first vacationed in Cannon Beach, my wife and I were just astounded. We were amazed at the beauty of this town. You know, from the the rock and the beach to the elk to the forest, the mountains. Yeah. Um, just the there's no McDonald's, there's no fast food places, there's no you know it's just it's this small, quaint, yeah. cozy little town that is charming that is stuck in like the early 1970s for what it looks like, right? Lots of mom and pop shops, no fast food places, no big box shops, and it's wonderful and it's charming. And we don't have a stoplight in Cannon yeah, Beach, you know? I talked to someone else who said exactly that. No yeah. stoplight in Cannon Beach. And, and how amazing is that? You know? How has Cannon Beach kind of changed over the years since first got here? Um, I don't think it's changed that much, you know? I don't think it's changed that much since I first got here. And that's kind of the fun thing about Cannon Beach is it doesn't really change all that much. Um, I would say it's changed much at all. Yeah, it's stayed like this. And this, <laughs> this is why we wanted to live here, you know? We made us, for the charm, we made, that's exactly right, we made a specific decision to move to this town. Um, we were living in Atlanta, and we're like, we're gonna end up moving to Oregon Coast, and my wife was working for the Red Cross, and she had the opportunity to transfer. And when she did, we found a store for sale. We bought the store, and we moved Thank here you. from Atlanta. Well, this is it. This is, this is gonna be the final place. Cool. Sit down with me. Appreciate it, man. Uh, yeah, uh, bring your bag. Thank you. Uh, bring that bottle of that rosé. Isn't that nice? It is. Number two attraction in uh, in this area is Ecola State Park. Uh, which is only two miles from here. The view is what everyone goes for. Incredible views. You'll see iconic shots that appear in magazines. <laughs> you're, uh, you're hundreds of feet above the water. Osborne's, if you can catch them, uh, is on Main Street, and that's just that's right next wonderful Tillamook ice cream. We got Osborne's ice cream, pumpkin flavor here. They wouldn't let me film inside the store, so that's a negative for them already. Your ice cream better be good. Wow. So this pumpkin pie flavor, first off, it's not an alternative kind of ice cream, it is the real deal. Uh, when we first look at it, we got the, the nice uh, orange pumpkin flavor, a little bit of white for the whipped cream, and you can see a little kind of like crust chunks in there. Um, so it looks actually really good. It's not over the top or anything. Um, it looks smooth, it looks dense, and it tastes it tastes exactly like pumpkin pie filling, except in ice cream form. The crust chunks are a good texture and they add to the flavor a lot. All right, I had to move to the car. We're still trying the ice cream here. So I actually walked about five to 10 minutes back to the car and the ice cream is still very dense and very creamy and it didn't seem to melt all that much, which is really good. All right. Mm. So my favorite part about this Osborne ice cream pumpkin pie flavor is the chunks of the pumpkin pie crust in here. It tastes exactly like good crust should taste. 
in a pumpkin pie and it goes very well with the pumpkin filling and the whipped cream on top. Whoops. It also adds a nice texture. It's not just ice cream. They're getting something else within the body of the flavor here. I haven't had real ice cream in a very long time. I would say it's been about three months and this is excellent. Today is not a day for counting calories. Today we are enjoying ourselves in Cannon Beach. When I was a kid, you would have to drag me by the ear to get me to come along for the annual shopping day in Cannon Beach. But when I saw that pink building, it was all worth it. Bruce's Candy Kitchen, the spot to grab endless amounts of in-house saltwater taffy, chocolate confections layered in dazzling colors, and strange oddities that send you back to when you were young. I talked with Kelly, one of the owners, about what makes this place special and why Cannon Beach is such a great location. My family has owned it since awesome. it opened. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, if you were to describe Bruce's Candy Kitchen to someone that is their first time in Cannon Beach, how would you describe it? Um, family owned and operated. We specialize in the homemade saltwater taffy as well as uh, chocolate confections. Um, fun and exciting and colorful. Yeah, uh, uh, we of, love candy. You know, we just have fun making candy and making cute stuff and helping people make sweet memories. Awesome. Speaking of candy, um, aside from the saltwater taffy, what would you say your uh, most popular chocolate um, item Our is? chocolate, our seafoam. It's sea a foam? crunchy vanilla honeycomb candy. It's kind of, it's like a homemade malt ball. Awesome. Um, and we are really well known for that. And then probably next would be like our sea salt caramels or um, but yeah, we still it. <laughs> um, how have you guys uh, handled our fare during the pandemic? <laughs> um, well, we were lucky. We had an established website already for years, so we were able to just really push that. Um, we shut our doors, but we never stopped selling yeah. candy, so that was nice. Um, so we've been okay. We had to lay off most of our staff initially oh, wow. because we just didn't know what to expect. So. Um, there was only a handful of us covering it, but we could because there were people to wait on. Right. It was just mail orders. Yeah. And a few curbside pickups, we adapted to doing that. We just got creative, and uh, it was one of our best Easter's ever. Really? And we weren't open. Because people couldn't get stuff, you know, and we opened a new window for us mm -hmm. of opportunity. Like, oh, you do baskets. Great. I'll have you do my basket. I did not even know that. Yeah. So it was, yeah. I mean, and we've always done stuff, but it's something we've never had to highlight. It was just, of course, we make Easter baskets. Yeah. But, so it actually, um, like, brought that to the forefront. It did, yeah. And now for even, so now we're open and we're still, it's like, oh, Thanksgiving well, or Halloween. We did yeah. Halloween baskets because people still couldn't see each other necessarily as much. And so we, it has given us a lot of new opportunities and ways to grow our business. That's really cool. So, yeah, silver lining. Why, uh, why Cannon Beach? Like, what makes Cannon Beach special to you or, like, you know, the owners? Well, I'm just home. Just home. Yeah. But uh, it's beautiful. So you're local? Yeah, oh, yeah. Born and raised. Yeah, my, really? my grandparents started a candy store in 1963. My mom was three years old. Okay. Um, so this is all I know. Mm -hmm. I went away to college in Salem at Willamette and spent some time in a city. And my, uh, Boyfriend, then fiance, then husband. We're getting married after we graduated. Um, he's the taffy maker. <laughs> yeah. And he started working here in high school. And my mom, we're like, hey, you want to come back? And I said, heck yeah, we do. It's beautiful. It's small. Right. I like knowing people. There's no stoplights. <laughs> we're just not city people. <laughs> we're not city yeah. people. We like it a little quieter. I mean, you know, it's pretty special. When, when stuff was closed down, it was weird. Because it was just eerie, but it was like, but we just got to really have it to ourselves. And that doesn't happen all the time. Even now, our tourist industry, it goes year round. Back in the day, they used to say we roll up the sidewalks after Labor Day. But that's just not the case anymore. And it's even now with this, like, we've seen more people. It's one of our best falls. We have seen, because people have more freedom. They're not stuck at their job. They can do their job here and maybe on their lunch break they bring the kids down to the store. You know, it's it's been a really interesting fall. Um, but I just think Cannon Beach is just special. Um, people that have their businesses, they care about it. You know, it's not a chain. Actually, so I've been coming here since I was a kid. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's, I always enjoyed this. This is the only reason why I came into town. Oh, was for thank the candy you. We appreciate that. Yeah, uh, we try. My corner used to be over there yeah. where like the yeah. beer candy was. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we, we did a little bit, did a little bit of growing over there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, with, you mentioned growing. How, how have you seen Candy Beach change over like maybe the past 10 or 20 years? Um, you know. At some point it hasn't because there's only so much room to grow. But I think the biggest thing has just been the year around um, activity. Um, our community, we had to create winter business. Um, I remember because You know, yeah, like stormy weather. We, uh, we had activities. We would do the wine walk in the spring. Like stuff, uh, the Saber Cannon Beach that developed. Um, just a really a group effort to keep people coming because we do. We need those dollars. I can't run. I can't survive on local. No one should need that much candy during it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. we're not a good thing. We're we're a treat. So um, seeing us do that and then it's just kind of taken off. We're now it's not. I mean, there's effort and in, in the activities, but um, that's a big thing. Just our off. What used to be our off season. Okay. You so know, the storm watchers come. Yeah. That part kind of yeah. yeah, well especially as like Portland's grown, you know, they're oh, yeah. we're so close. <laughs> we're a quick drive away or day trip. And so Portland's grown, that's where we still see that steady flux okay. of hey, those people are gonna come visit here at least once. And if they like it, um they'll come, come back, yeah. We yeah. yeah. so. Number three attraction in Cannon Beach are the art galleries. We have 15 galleries, I believe, that are active in town, and uh, so it's, you can you can easily make a day or two of that. Here, the climate, and, and there are a lot of artists are drawn here uh, to work, uh, and the uh, the galleries do such a great job of presenting the work that it just grows on itself. Okay. It's it's really a, a terrific art town. Awesome. How have you seen Cannon Beach change over maybe the last ten or twenty years? The latest changes really are two restaurants. And you're referring to the, the pandemic, obviously. Yeah, right? the pandemic has been especially difficult for restaurants. Mm -hmm. So a lot of restaurants have either closed or turned over oh, wow. uh, within the last year. Okay. What are some like what are some of like the bigger issues can beach can beach faces? Anything ongoing or well uh, you know, the... Aside from the, the pandemic, I guess. Yeah, in, in, a, in a larger, longer sense, uh, climate change is, mm -hmm. is a big deal. Uh, okay. it's, it's extremely rough on the wildlife. Uh, it's, it's a big concern for anyone who owns beachfront property. Yeah. Uh, it's a big concern for anyone who lives near the ocean, period. Yeah. Uh, Temperature change is, is is affecting all of the marine creatures. Yeah. Uh, it's you know a, a two degree change in ocean temperature is is like running a two degree fever for humans. Uh, so it's it's a really serious thing. Okay. I encourage everyone to check out Cannon Beach. I, to me, it's uh, it's just a one of the best places in the state, awesome. maybe on the whole west coast. Yeah, I love it here as well. Yeah, that's probably why I keep coming back. Yeah. Uh, the risk is that you come back too often, you might end up living here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it happens uh, to be. <laughs> Looking back through your rearview mirror as you leave this town, it will feel as though you are stepping out of some kind of whimsical and wondrous time portal. 
back to reality. You reflect, this soft, ambient, mellow, slow-moving, pastel place is the simpler time we all need right now. Sure, Cannon Beach hasn't changed much, but maybe that's a good thing. Maybe we all need to take a little trip back in time where things were a little more charming and magical 